Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on Blender Shader Nodes, where today I'll be showing you how to make this liquid metal nanotech effect. It's similar to the one in Avengers Infinity War. It's pretty simple, doesn't take too much math. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with a fresh model without any fancy shaders or anything in it. This model uh, I got off of Sketchfab for free. The link to it will be in the description. I recommend you pick it up. It's a very good model, one of the most professional ones I have seen recently. So now that we have our model like this, let's make a gradient that decides which part is the liquid me metal nanotech and which part is the normal suit. And to do that, we need our gradient. So to do that, let's make an empty right here. And this will be our origin point for where the effect starts. Let's bring that into our scene using the input texture coordinate and let's set it to our empty, empty 03. There we go. Now that we have this, Let's go and add in a vector math node set to length and connect the object output into the length input. And as we can see, we now have the distance from our empty. We could see the darker parts are the parts that are closer to the empty origin and the white parts are the ones furthest from it. And that's good, that's what we want. Now that we have this, let's add in a math node set to add. And as we can see, if we go into the negative, let's set it to uh, subtract. So that when this effect goes up, or the value, the darker parts grow, which will be the part that is our normal suit. So now that we have this, let's move this over. And now let's have this affect the opacity of our suit, or which parts are invisible and which parts are not. Let's add in a math node set to less than, and connect this to our alpha. Now, if we look at the final result, we can see that the parts further from the empty or according to our gradient that we could use right here. These parts are now invisible, which are the white parts, and the black parts, which are right here, are uh, normal, which is what we want. Let's set the less than to one or something close to one, and that should work pretty well. Now let's start warping this effect so that it's not just a clean circle, and that's pretty simple. Let's use another input texture coordinate right here. It's, there will be no object in this part right here, let's have this be the input to a noise texture. So let's hook the object into right there. And let's mix this with our gradient right here. So let's use a mix RGB node and connect our noise texture to here, just like this. And as we can see in a second that, there we go, this is now affecting our uh, gradient is now mixing it up a little bit and it looks a little strong right now but we could just change the scale and the detail until it looks good i think that's looking pretty good right there and now let's animate our gradient since we have the basics down so over here let's move our subtract node all the way over to here so that the suit is completely invisible let's press i and now let's move this all the way over to here to the end of our animation and move this so that the suit is completely visible and press I again to set the keyframe. So as we can see, oh, and make sure you press T to set the interpolation to linear. There we go. So now we could see that the suit is now forming and it works. Now we just need to add all, in, all the bells and whistles like the bump that makes it look 3D and the color change to make it look more uh, like it's gray metal that's being formed into the nice red and bronze paint. So to do that, let, let's start with the uh, the bump. So to do that, let's use a map range node, converter map range. Let's set this to smoother step and connect our gradient right there. And now let's have a vector bump node right here and put it into our normal output. What this will do is, let's wait for it to load up. It'll make the effect look like it's more 3D instead of just like a piece of paper that's being formed. So let's wait for it to load up. It does take a while because this is Eevee. Shaders take a while to compile. And as we can see, yes, it looks like there's some uh, bump happening, but it looks like it's affecting a bit too much and for too long. So we can use the map range node to constrain where the effect is. So that's like only here. Let's set the distance to 0.1 actually negative 0.1 because it want, we want it to look like this part is going deeper than everything else. There we go, let's play the animation back. And yes, it does look like that the effect is working. It looks a little lumpy and not quite right, so let's just dial the effect in a little bit more. 
and that's looking pretty good. But it's not looking like it's liquid metal. And to do that, there's a pretty simple fix. Let's add in a noise texture again, set it to one dimensional noise, and hook our gradient in right here, and multiply it by our smoother step part right there. So multiply it, let's hook that into that, and that into that. And as we can see, this is now, if we turn up the scale, let's turn up the scale a little bit to make the effect a bit more visible, we get this very wavy, almost liquidy pattern going across it. And if we put this into our height node right here, and make sure you set this to clamp just so that we don't get any values that go below or over one. So now if we look at the output, we can see, let's just wait for it to load up in a quick second. It'll take a little while. Ah, there we go. So as we can see, we now have this very cool liquid effect that's rippling across the surface. Now we could change we could change some parameters right here. We could turn up the detail on our little liquid part right here, make it a bit more detailed. I think that's looking kind of good. We could also change the detail of the original noise right here to make it look a bit more detailed as well. This is all up to personal preference. In some cases, it looks better. Uh, I think three will be good for right there. Yeah, that's looking pretty nice. Okay, now that we're here, we're almost done. Not quite, though. Let's add in some frames to uh, organize our notes a little bit. So this is the noise texture. This is our gradient part. Make sure to organize your nodes. It always makes everything much less of a headache. Let's add in a reroute just to keep things simple. And there we go. Maybe another frame right here. Very nice. Keep your nodes organized. It's what? It's very important. Okay, now that we have this part up, the final part should be warping the color, because right now it's just red, and it doesn't look like there's any liquid nanotech parts right here. So to do that, we'll use the gradient right here, and we'll hook this up to right here. Let's set the part to ease, and let's make uh, the gradient quite a bit sharper. Yeah, something like that. That should work. And let's put this into a mix RGB node that mixes with the color. So something like this. So if we preview this, we could see that the parts that are being revealed turn to the normal colors over time, but they start off as white, or I think gray would look better in this case. Just like that. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's preview it, or let's look at the final product. And we should see, once it loads up, because the EV is quite slow, ah, there we go. That's looking very good. That now it's starting off gray, but it turns into the normal color over time. And we can make this a bit more extreme. I think that's looking pretty good. We might want to lighten up the color right here to make it more of a silvery gray. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. And that's basically the entire effect. But let's customize it a little bit more. I think it's a bit too noisy. Let's see, we could change that a bit more to make it bigger. We could also change the mix factor so that the noise has more of an input on the effect. Something like that. Yeah, or maybe let's control Z that. Let's change it back a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Again, we could change the detail to make it more complex or less complex, make it more like a liquid. Each person has their own preference. And again, we could change the origin point of the nanotech effect. Uh, it, technically it should be here in the center, because that's how it was like in the movie. So as we can see, very nice. It's working quite well. And yeah, that's basically the entire effect. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials, let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, here's the entire node set up, just so that you could see where you went wrong or where you went right. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.